Hey, welcome back. As you can see from the title and thumbnail, in this video, we will disassemble and examine each engine component in detail, down to the bolts. Here, we are using a four-stroke fuel-injected engine with a manual transmission and a manual clutch. Yes, each motorcycle brand has a different engine configuration, but generally, the components of these engines are quite similar across different motorcycles. So, without further ado, let's dive in. As you can see, even in such a small engine, there are numerous components. All these parts come together as a unified system, and none can be missing, or the engine won't start. All right, let's start with the first component, the piston. The piston is the main engine component responsible for generating energy. It moves up and down inside the cylinder. Since the piston moves within the cylinder, its diameter must be smaller than that of the cylinder. However, this could cause compression leaks. Therefore, there are three piston rings to seal this gap. Next, we have the connecting rod and the crankshaft. These two components convert the up and down motion of the piston into rotational motion. Above the piston, we find the cylinder head. This is where a lot of action happens. Here, we can see a recess positioned directly above the cylinder. This recess is the combustion chamber, where the combustion process occurs. This is also where the spark plug is installed. Additionally, there are two channels, the intake and exhaust channels. The intake channel is responsible for allowing air and fuel to enter. This channel connects to the throttle valve, and the fuel injector is also installed here. Meanwhile, the exhaust channel connects to the exhaust pipe, providing a pathway for the combustion gases to exit. To open and close these two channels, there are two valves, the intake valve and the exhaust valve. These valves are installed in such a way that when they are pushed, they open the respective channel, whether it's the intake or exhaust. To synchronize the valve movement with the piston's motion, there is a valve mechanism. This mechanism consists of two gears, one attached to the crankshaft and the other to the cylinder head. These two gears are connected by a timing chain. On the side of the timing chain, there is a timing guide and a tensioner to keep the timing chain taut. There is also a camshaft, which has lobes and a rocker arm to press the valves. Finally, there is a spring to ensure the valves close after being pressed. The cylinder head, cylinder, and transmission block are bolted together with long bolts. On the right side of the crankshaft, there are two gears. The first gear is connected to the oil pump. This oil pump functions similarly to other hydraulic pumps, but it pumps oil instead. It ensures that oil from the bottom lubricates all engine parts, including the cylinder head. The second gear is used to transfer the engine's rotation to the next component. To prevent oil leaks, the top of the cylinder head is covered by the cylinder head cover. Moving on to the transmission block, there is a manual transmission unit. This unit consists of a series of gears with different numbers of teeth, allowing for varying output speeds. For a more detailed explanation, you can check out my previous video on manual transmissions. To connect the engine to the transmission, we use a manual clutch. Besides connecting the engine's rotation to the transmission, the clutch must also be able to instantly disengage the engine's rotation. If you disassemble the clutch, you'll see many plates inside. I've also covered this in a previous video, so feel free to click on it for more details. The right side of the engine is covered by the right engine cover. Moving to the left side, we find the magnet rotor. Although it looks like a drum, it is actually a permanent magnet. What is its function? If you look at the magnet cover, there is a series of coils. When the crankshaft rotates, the magnet also rotates. As the magnet rotates around the coils, it generates electrical energy. Thus, the magnet and coils serve as the motorcycle's electrical system. On the transmission output shaft, an output gear is installed. 
This gear connects to the rear wheel gear via a chain. Another essential component is the starter motor. We should be grateful for this component because, thanks to this small motor, we can start the engine simply by pressing the start button. What about this part? Here, a water pump can be installed. Not every engine has a water pump. Only engines with a radiator cooling system have one. Essentially, the water pump circulates the coolant, allowing it to flow back and forth between the engine and the radiator. So, those are some of the components of a motorcycle engine. I hope this has expanded your knowledge. Thanks for watching.